All right, all right. Let's talk about emulators already. In my very first Mastering the Steam Controller video, I said that classic games are a great way to familiarize yourself with the Steam Controller's D-pad. Many games like Super Mario World or Sonic the Hedgehog and stuff like that are great for learning new controllers by sheer virtue of how they're designed. Or hey, maybe you just want the surreal experience of playing a childhood favorite on a brand new weird controller. That's appealing too. We will get to Dolphin and PCSX2 starting next week, but for now, we will be covering RetroArch. RetroArch is kind of like an emulator launcher. You download emulator cores within the program itself, and you can launch just about any game you want from it after setting it up. It organizes all of your games by platform with this neat PS3 cross-media bar thing, and you can also set it up to display box art, and it all just looks great. If you want to play pretty much any console game from the year 2000 backward, RetroArch has you covered. Before we begin, though, I want to point out, I will not be telling you where to get games. Downloading pirated ROMs is a huge moral gray area, and while I won't judge you for however you get your games, I'm not going to help you pirate stuff. That's not what this channel is about. If you have the original game cartridges and discs, there are tools that you can use to rip ROMs and ISOs to your hard drive. While it's currently out of stock as of writing, Dragonbox sells this thing called a Retrode that you can plug into your computer and play cartridge-based games. Plus, if you have a decent disk drive, you can easily get your PS1 games onto your system with a little research. Alright, let's set up RetroArch already. Start by downloading the program. I've put a link in the description. Download the version that best fits the computer you're playing on. This program does work on Windows, Mac, and Linux. Once you have it downloaded and set up in whatever folder you want to put it in, add this exe to Steam by going to Library, clicking Add a Game, Add Non-Steam Game, Browse, and then find the exe and hit OK. When you go to edit the controller configuration, set it to the default gamepad config, and, of course, say it with me now, go into the left trackpad and set Requires Click to Off. RetroArch automatically detects Xbox controllers and the like, so if you set up your Steam controller as an Xbox controller, you'll have no problem. Now launch it through Steam. The first thing you're going to want to do is go into Input Settings and give it a method for returning to RetroArch. This is largely how you're going to be quitting games, pausing, saving states, all that emulator mumbo jumbo. I personally set it to L3 and R3, which is easy and usually doesn't interrupt the game in any meaningful way. Now, the way RetroArch works is that you download cores that emulate different consoles. From the main icon on the far left, click Online Updater, and then Core Updater. There's a huge list of cores, some of which you might recognize if you're already familiar with emulation. I'm going to list off which ones you should download based on my own experiences. For NES, use Nestopia UE. For Super Nintendo, use either BSNES Accuracy if you think your system's pretty good, or BSNES Balanced if you don't. The only option for N64, Mupin 64 Plus, isn't that great, but it does get the job done. Go with it. For Game Boy, use Emux. For GBA, use MGBA. PS1 games don't have a lot of great options either, but Mednafen PSX hardware works well in most situations. Finally, for Genesis and Mega Drive games, I recommend Genesis Plus GX. I won't go into too much detail on Genesis games since Steam already sells most of the best Genesis games, but, you know, just in case. There are other cores you can use if you want to play stuff like PSP or Dreamcast games, but the consoles I listed are pretty much exclusively what I use RetroArch for. Still, if you've got games for those other systems and want to play them with the Steam controller, play around and see what works. Next, let's add the games. Head over to this plus sign here and select Scan Directory. Here, you can tell RetroArch where all your ROMs and ISOs are and it'll add them to your list of games. If for some reason it doesn't pick up one of your ROMs, you can also select Scan File and manually navigate to a ROM you want to play. For games that it does detect though, it's as simple as navigating to the console's playlist and hitting Go. Before starting the game, it'll ask you which core you want to use. Select the one you downloaded for that system. And done! You're playing Superman 64 in no time. There is one added step for PS1 games, though. You do need the original PS1 BIOS files. Again, find these on your own. 
Google is your friend. Stick them in the system folder in your RetroArch install, rename them to something that resembles this, and bam! Tony Hawk's Pro Skater, here we come. And that's about all there is to it. If you want one more level of flair, head back to Online Updater, go to Thumbnails Updater, and download the zip file that corresponds with the systems you're emulating. This will add box art to the RetroArch menu, making it easier to identify each of your games. Now, all of those old classic games that you've been collecting are at your Steam controller's mercy. If you want some recommendations of which games to start out with, here are some games that helped me learn the controller, or they just feel great with the controller. Any of the old Super Mario platformers on NES or Super Nintendo are fantastic for learning how to use the left trackpad as a D-pad. Any of the Pokemon games on Game Boy through Advance also work well for that same purpose. With a chunkier and more responsive control stick, Superman 64 no longer controls like hot garbage. I don't know if that helps the game much, but eh, take it or leave it. If you want to use the right trackpad as a set of buttons, a few N64 games might be able to help you learn, with Ocarina of Time, Pokemon Stadium, and Paper Mario being particularly useful learning tools. Robocop vs. The Terminator. Enough said. And finally, if you're curious, my favorite game project playthroughs of Chrono Trigger and Castlevania 1 were both done through this program on the Steam Controller. If a schlub like me can beat Castlevania with the Steam Controller, you can too. With that, I leave you to have fun with whatever old games you may have on you. Next week, we're moving on to Dolphin. I'll see you then.